Welcome back friends to the shop. Today's video was uh, requested by my friend and fellow professional timber faller, Terry, uh, who wanted to share something with me. Uh, and that was a tool that he built that he packed around for 20 years. He said, nothing would please me more than to see you using it on your faller's belt. And if you could show some young cutters how to make it, it might help them along too. So let's take a look at it and then we'll make one together. Terry sent a nice handwritten note here and um, he just wrote briefly, for 20 years when I was a pro faller, sawyer, uh, when it wasn't on my belt loop, it was on my starter rope. Now, when a guy who has done something for so long, uh, and it doesn't have to be a sawyer, it could be a, a millwright or an electrician, um, shares something with you that he's come up with to make the job easier, uh, with all that experience brought to bear on it, you wanna stand up and take note, uh, whatever that is. The classic example is a granddad's seven pound mall here. Now, if you were to look at this, you wouldn't think too much about it, um, but uh, upon closer reflection, you'd realize that you cannot buy a, a mall with a handle like this, not, not that I'm aware of. And this came out of, this, this particular length came out of a lifetime of experience. And what granddad determined, and a lot of other guys that have done something and worked with tools their entire life is, is is distilling something down till it's till it's it's the perfect length, right? This particular hammer and this maul and the weight of it all, uh, you know, for Granddad was the ideal length. It was short enough where you could use it in a confined space. Now, him being a mechanic, you know, that's also going to influence how this how his tools kind of evolve, but also long enough where a guy could can still strike with it and get some force. In my, you know, funny story, my friend um, uh, Tony, he had a very similar story to this. I think he, his dad or grandfather was a millwright and had a very similar thing. And he, we were talking about this, you know, and how granddad had, after a whole lifetime, had determined that the 21 and a half inches from the bottom, you know, to here was the perfect length uh, for just the all around use, you know. So information like that is valuable. And, and you don't want to discount it because it took a guy maybe 50 years to come up with that. And what a benefit for us that are just getting started um, to have that. Uh, and that's why I always like to share those things on the video. So when Terry sent me this tool, I took special notice and I decided to make a video on it. And this is what he sent me. Now, there's nothing really novel or new about this, but I can tell you from personal experience that it's a little thing that just makes your life so much easier and it took, how long did it take guys to figure this out? Now, the, I, I've seen this before and you've seen me. This is the one that I originally built here and you can see the hole is offset. Well, I didn't, I didn't figure this out quite as well as he had. And what I had did was I just tied a piece of paracord on there um, and hung it. Well, the problem is, is it rendered the, the smaller uh, portion of the scrunch useless because I had a piece of paracord going around there and I couldn't use it on the smaller saws and I lived with it because I was just basically using it on the pro saws anyway. Well, Terry's design is so much better. <laughs> well, all he did is drill a hole in the top and put a cotter in there uh, and a clip. And so as he was saying, he either had this hooked onto his father's belt because this is a tool that you don't want to be out. I mean, this is a, a six or seven dollar tool, but you get up in the mountains and be cutting firewood. And if you find yourself without it or you've dropped it and you can't find it and you throw a chain, uh, you're going home without any firewood. So it, it, is, it is an important piece of, of kit as your saw itself. So you can, and this is, uh, if I haven't mentioned all right, this is my father's belt here pretty common for what most guys are going to want to have, a, a, an IFAC, that's, that's kind of a new thing, but a lot of guys are adopting that, the excellent Grizzly Peak Enterprises, uh, made in Idaho, aluminum axe sheath, uh, which is just the best thing in the whole world, Spencer logging tape, and I also got this particular faller's belt through G Grizzly Peak Enterprises as well, and I like it because of the aluminum grommets on it that uh, you can hook your tape and different things to it, and, it's, um, and it looks cool. <laughs> there, so there is that. So what I had done is I had, uh, as I said, that piece of paracord hanging on there, uh, and which wasn't ideal. I did find that one thing you gotta be careful, especially when you're working around timber and down timber, is if you have something that'll hang up and catch, it will catch on everything. <laughs> My cousin that was a roofer said, if you're ever sliding off a roof, just grab an extension cord because that sucker will hook onto something. 
<laughs> Isn't that the truth? And I had this thing hanging up on me in some branches, and I got so aggravated with it, I took my knife out and I cut it off. Well, then I was sticking it in here and trying to put it in my pocket, and I picked it up off the ground a couple times. Well, Terry, of course, has got the, the best option. I should have thought of it myself, but I didn't. So he's got several things going on here. So what we got going on here is first he painted it orange. Well, why is that important? Well, how much easier is it to find something in the, in the, against the dirt or the trees that's orange versus this kind of grayish color that looks like a rock, right? So that's one thing. Uh, the other is that he put a cotter pin in there in the center. Now that's going to give uh, us the ability to use both tools. We have uh, small saws and big saws. And the other thing, and I don't know if, if this was by design, but it just dawned on me uh, from personal experience, that let's say that you were falling or something or you did get hung up, the way that he's just bent this open here, this is going to pull out under, you know, maybe 100 pounds of load or so. It's not going to be you know, it's not going to come off when you're using it and you're not going to lose it, I don't think. But if you did get into a problem, it would strip clean off of there because it's the way it's designed uh, and then just um, you'd be free of it. So it's there's a lot of stuff going on right there. I mean, it's it's that's a, a lifetime of experience to come up with that simple tool. So let's make one together. I got a fresh one right here. So what you're going to need is a, a good quality scrunch tool. And these are not all created equal, so I would get one from either Husqvarna or Still. That your saws will come with them. They seem to be about the best length, and I really prefer them over the other ones. You're going to need some sort of a clip. You can see here Terry just used a, a spring steel clip. I don't like these. I find that they're difficult to get off uh, my belt with these grommets because that edge is so sharp. I tend to like the brass ones that are a little bit smoother. It's a personal preference, but you can get these at any hardware store, brass, chrome, it doesn't make any difference. I like Terry's better in that it's got that round deal at the bottom, so it's gonna find its center better than mine, but this is one I have on hand that I'm, I'm just gonna use. And then of course, we're gonna use, use a cotter pin. And we got, uh, luckily we got granddad's, uh, <laughs> he saved everything, got granddad's uh, big collection of cotter pins. And we'll, uh, I picked one out here. And then a, some high visibility paint, red or orange. I like the orange better, but I have the red. So uh, let's go drill it and then we'll just put it together, uh, put it together together. There's nothing overly complicated about this, something that anyone can do here, obviously. Now, if you're getting mad that this is too basic, not everyone came out of the womb knowing everything about everything like you so a lot of guys are learning so have a little bit of patience and charity here so uh we'll just well, actually we better get terry's so that we want to take advantage of <laughs> you know these things these subtle differences that you don't think about well, he's just basically right in the center we'll just uh, use a step drill on here and drill that out Take your mill bastard file and we'll just file that off. Smooth that out so it don't the burr doesn't give you cut you or give you sliver. I used to paint a lot of stuff when I had my Jeep business and I made up a bunch of these little wires just out of brazing rod and they're handy. Just make up three or four of them, put a bend on both ends, and then you can paint and then hang them up by a tree branch or something. So we'll just uh oh, there's a wind blowing here. Paint it uh, red. I like the red. And we'll drop it in the gravel. That's all right. It's just happy little paint here. Doesn't mind the gravel. <laughs> yeah. I am not smart. All right. Speaking of smart, so I heard that there was some confusion by my East Coast subscribers um, about uh, not understanding the hat here. Now this says East Coast on it. I wear that as a as respect to you guys. Apparently what I wasn't aware of that many of you don't know how to read. So it's E-A-S, it's East Coast. That's what that says. So take your crayon and practice that a few times then you'll be able to get further in life. Let's look at these beautiful fall colors. Now, uh, you just get to use a regular cotter key. You get a pretty heavy duty one, you know, something to consider when you're picking it out at the hardware store if you don't have it, is make sure that when this is closed, uh, that you, it will still slide. 
you know, a little bit there so it's not, you know, doesn't bind up and stick out at a crazy angle or something. Now this is going to be too long here, so we'll want to, of course, trim it down. Now Terry's is, when we pull it tight there, so he's got about a quarter of an inch sticking up. So what I think I'll do here is we'll just estimate that quarter inch and then uh, figure out, mark it there, how much you want to cut off there. So about right there. Cut that down. Oh, Nipex, excuse me. Uh, I, the, all the contest winners, the, the, are there, your tool's been sent. You should be getting it this week if you don't have it already. And they're sending you out these awesome 10 inch cutters, which I have really been enjoying. I got a pair too. I'll bet if we just reach in there with that screwdriver and just give it a tap. While the second coat is drying, we'll wrap it up here. I don't know what it is with me and spray paint and gasoline. I get it everywhere. I paint my fingers. <laughs> I start off with the best intentions and I just end up with a mess. So uh, again, thanks Terry for, for sharing this. Uh, I, I, it's cool. I, I really appreciate that. And I, I will be carrying the one that you sent me on my father's belt. I'm gonna put it right here, right there. I got it hooked on there. And it'll be good to go. I, my extra one there, I'll, I'll give that to the next guy that uh, doesn't have one um, when that opportunity comes up. But that's a pretty cool deal. Uh, something I hadn't heard of that Terry mentioned that we'll just close with here is he said that he, uh, let's say you don't have a follower's belt on, you're just doing firewood or so and you want to keep it around you. He said he'd just clip it onto his, um, let me do it, onto his pole rope, onto his saw. And I hadn't thought about that. I don't know how I feel about that, but uh, I'll try it right there. So that's uh, pretty handy. It uh, bangs around a little bit, but I don't know that it would really be in the way. And I hate having screwdrivers in your pocket. Man, every time I put a screwdriver in my pocket, I forget about it and you jump into your truck and then bam, you got a big hole in your upholstery. Tell me, comment if you've done that before, because uh, if you haven't done that, then you haven't worked around shops too much, because uh, that's, that's, I've done it many times. So that's pretty cool. Um, I know if you have it, if you have things like this that that you've learned, if you're a seasoned citizen uh, that you've learned over time that have really made life easier, that might be a benefit to not only me but younger subscribers. Please reach out uh, and share that with me. You know, I think I've been asked a lot to if we could get a PO box so that folks could send stuff that we could put on the on the channel, and maybe I can ask Mrs. W if she could do that. Um, cause I, I enjoy this sort of content and just the, the, like the mall granddad's hammer mall handle. And, and this sort of thing is, uh, it's just gold. It's pure, absolute pure gold, um, for guys coming up. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks Terry for taking the time to write and to send that and share your wisdom and knowledge and, uh, keep us in your prayers and may God bless you and your families. And we'll see you guys on the next video.